Hello everybody, this is Charles and I'm back with another toy review, this time for Bandai's Tamashi Nation exclusive Metal Build Gundam Avalanche Exeer! Alright! So, okay, uh, first before I uh, start the review, I have to thank uh, my friend Gabriel for lending me his Exia normal version first to do the uh, review. I ordered my uh, Exia uh, Gundam Avalanche Exia from uh, Nippon Yasan. I ordered the, the December batch, but they uh, wrote me an email to say that the uh, delivery is delayed to January or so they claim. So I will only be getting my normal version uh, in. Um, January, uh, which which is you know weird because I ordered the uh, the batch for December and they are gonna give it to me only in January, so so yeah maybe they consolidated their orders for December and January and sent it at one shot who knows but uh, thanks to Gabriel for lending me this and uh, thanks to my friend in Japan Mr Toshiya San for helping me order the limited edition, so this uh, Gundam Avalanche uh, Exia Weapon Plus Pack. Alright, it's only limited to uh, two orders per account, so it is very, very limited. And uh, really thankful for for my uh, friend Toshia for helping me get this. And uh, the the difference between these two basically is like okay, as you can see, the box art. So for the Weapon Plus Pack version, the box art is actually similarly done by a uh, renowned or a uh, a uh, respected uh, Japanese illustrator. So the box is really nice. Okay, the box are the same size, but you can see the box is really nice. It's, it's, it's just awesome, really nice. And even for the uh, normal version box, it's really nice as well. You know, for metal build, we've always been getting uh, silver linings for the side profile. This one, you you get the gold words metal build and the uh, gold frame as well. So maybe this is a. Uh, this is gonna be the trend for Banda when they release their Tamashi exclusive metal build. So maybe the normal releases will be uh, the um, silver frame and silver words, uh, blue words, and maybe for the exclusive one they use the gold one. With the exception, of course, <coughs> of um, Destiny Gundam, whereby they use a totally different box art. So if I flip to the back, all right, over here. So back-wise, the artwork is almost exactly the same. So you see the uh, same poses and <coughs> excuse me. Same poses and everything. <clears throat> Only difference for the uh, Weapon Plus pack is that you see they show how the um, Excel will look like if you have the X, uh, the Weapon Plus pack. So basically, what the Wep Weapon Plus pack gives you is an extra shield. These two uh, GN uh, parts, the uh, extra holes to actually hold the two swords, these two swords and two extra beam blades. <clears throat> so basically, these are the, the um, extra accessories that uh, comes with the weapon plus pack. So it's not really a lot of difference but uh, apparently a lot of people are really really crazy about the uh, weapon plus pack maybe because of its rarity so a lot of people are going for it but if you're not a completist I think uh, the the normal version is just fine. You, know, you get the exact Axia, uh, Avalanche Axia but maybe for the weapons pack okay because you get the extra set of weapons which makes him look a lot more symmetrical so so symmetrical because uh, instead of just having these two swords and the uh, big sword over here you have two swords on the left and two swords on the right so it makes it more uh, balanced and more symmetrical so symmetrical so maybe that's what some people like but anyway okay I'm not opening the uh, weapon plus pack version okay uh, because of its rarity okay I'm just gonna keep it aside uh, I'm gonna focus on the uh, normal version so just uh, give me a moment while I put the weapons pack version aside all right so here I'm gonna do the uh, review on Axia. All right. So here's Axia, Avalanche. Uh, I'm now gonna move the uh, backdrop a little bit to the front. Okay. I'm gonna move it a little bit to the front. Support a little bit to the front as well. Okay, how's this one camera? Okay, it's plenty. I'm gonna lower this um, a little bit. Oops. Someone might have catch a glimpse of uh, the normal Axia. Okay. This will come up later. Okay. So here is Axia Avalanche. Um. I actually took out the armor uh, parts earlier on, okay, so that I can uh, do some reviewing and uh, details on the armor parts. So you all need to bear me for about while I arrange uh, the parts over here. Okay, G and drive. Okay, swords. Okay, the big sword over here. So uh, this review is going to be pretty extensive and uh, pretty detailed. I think uh, one of the more detailed reviews that I'm going to do. 
so I'll probably need to pause the camera at some point uh, so that I can take uh, take a longer video because my video can only capture like 20 odd minutes uh, and if I overshot it's gonna cut so anyway yes so here first off let's talk about the die cast content of uh, Axia, alright, Axia Aval Avalanche Axia. Let me just move the camera a little bit more. Okay, so firstly, okay, uh, you can see from here the entire arm, okay, this part is made of die cast. Okay, entire lower arm as well is made of die cast. So the entire arm is made of die cast apart from the plastic parts that clips on over here. And the inner frame of the, med the body as well is made of die cast, a lot of, a lot of metal. So the torso is entirely out of die cast. The, uh, hip joint okay it's actually made of die cast over here the entire leg okay even for the front okay over here the entire hip portion okay is made of die cast so this leg part okay is entirely made of die cast which is really really cool entirely made of die cast which is really swell and i do like the um, amount of detail and efforts that's being put in my camera can't capture the details but over here inside here even though this is supposed to be cover up it does show 001 celestial bean so celestial bean bean okay so the details are really really awesome and you see a lot of decals and prints on Axia itself is really really I tell you wonderful and I think it really put a lot of effort to uh, make a very fantastic and uh, top quality piece let me just get this out first okay so here is actually on one side here has uh, everything assembled and on one side has everything that can be taken out uh, I'm not sure if the front part of this can be taken out I tried to take it out but I couldn't take it out completely and I'm not going to force it uh, but basically this is what uh, you have in terms of articulation wise the head can rotate uh, 360 okay it's also a very good neck articulation it look pretty much high okay looks very very high and the neck itself you can actually extend it outwards okay I'm not sure why you actually uh, have the joint to allow you over here to pull out to this extent but you can actually extend it outwards and uh, have a much bigger sense of a uh, much bigger range of uh, articulation for this in terms of let's say the torso all right the torso can actually bend backwards this much okay okay over here you can see and you can bend forward this much so there's really a lot of articulation for this body over here okay i'm gonna make him go back to the default position the waist wise they can actually fro freely rotate for 360 degrees okay and the arms wise if one arms if unrestricted can actually move up to 90 degrees for the shoulder 360 rotation for the arm elbow has 360 rotation as well double jointed elbows over here okay 90 and over here double jointed elbows really cool uh freely articulated wrist as well okay and then for the shoulder joints okay you can actually extend this part out as well so the inner part of the shoulder joint this part is actually die cast as well which is really awesome so you see you can do this much of range of movement over here which allows him you know for example he needs to pick up his sword this is the top articulation he gives him the range of motion to stick all the way through that side and to take his sword so if you want to simulate a pose of him taking his sword he can do it and over here as well the chest portion you can actually move up as well okay move up and down it's pretty really cool these front skirt wise can actually move all the way up so there's no restriction to the uh, motion of the legs so legs wise okay very, very tight joints can move really all the way up here all the way back as well he has double jointed the uh, knees in a sense so you can actually bend the legs this much and then for the other side you can bend this much so it does give him a really nice running po uh, pose okay let me just flip this back and of course over here wise you can have a nice rotation over here I'm sure you can do about near 360 but that's not break it right you just have enough motion for you to actually pose uh, the legs okay over here this part can actually move and over at the uh, lower leg side you can actually move this part this much up okay if unrestricted you can actually move this much up you can actually move this much back really cool and then uh, the feet can rotate as well Okay, tight joints. You can see swivel or swing sideways as well, left and right. Okay, and for the toes, okay, you can actually bend this much down, all the way down, or you can bend this much up. Okay, just to give him some uh, extra motion. So this is uh, basically the type of articulation he has. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna put the figure aside first. I'm gonna go through some of the uh, parts that he has, just to go through some of the motion that he has. Okay, 
So for this part, it's actually from the uh, shoulder portion. Okay, shoulder portion wise, yeah, so it also has its uh, range of motion. Over here, you can actually lift this part up all the way up. See, so comparing to the other side, you can see you can actually lift this side up. Okay, and you can lift this side up this much as well, all the way up, and you can actually lift this part down. Okay. To review the uh, thruster or something of the sort. So the nice thing, the interesting thing about this is that this part is diecast. Okay, this metal part is uh, diecast. Okay, and this part over here on the top is diecast as well. And this inner part is also diecast as well. So these grey metallic grey shiny parts are diecast. So it's really awesome that they put a lot, a lot of metal in this piece. Really, a lot of metal in this piece, which is really, really cool. Okay. And uh, moving on to this backpack, this backpack that it has, okay, uh, over here you can't see the diecast, but over here we'll swing now this, okay, the arm, this die, this arm over here is made of diecast, so it acts on extra uh, weight to it. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm coughing because I'm, I'm having a cold, uh, but this is not going to stop me from giving you guys a review. And over here, the uh, uh, leg cover. This part is die cut as well. So it's really a lot of metal. So right now I'm just gonna assemble uh Axia Avalanche Axia, okay, from uh, bottom to up, just to show you guys what he's really really made of. So over here wise, let me just um fit in this part first. So this part, okay, goes in over here. So basically I already took out uh wider parts have been taken out for Axia. Uh it's pretty fun. And over here you fill it to the back over here. Okay, nicely. And then for this part, start it in over here. Okay, really cool. And then for the uh, back part right now, what you gonna do is slot this part into this, into here. Okay, slot it in. And then for this blue part, okay, cover it over here. Similarly for the other side. Cover it, snap, everything snaps in place really, really nicely. And then for this, finishing touch. Over here, I'm gonna slot it over here. This is the back, yep. Okay, slot this to the back. So align it nicely. Okay, got it. And for this part, very nice. Uh, this plastic part over here, this is the green part. Okay, doesn't really show, but oh well. Okay, slot, move this down first. Slot it in, and then for this, the uh, GM part, slot it in over here, and we have the lower body done. Okay, right now I'm gonna slot the uh, arm, but let me just slot the uh, shoulder part first. Okay, before I slot the shoulder part, I need to open this part of the arm. Okay, push it in over here. This, uh, there's this rubber part of the shoulder that's supposed to go inside here. So over here right now, I'm gonna fit the shoulder down in. Okay, I think I got it in already. I'll slit the arm through. This uh, rubber piece through. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this other part in. Actually, you just need to slot this in. Okay. Actually, you just need to pull it in this way and then you just don't close it completely and then once you've done this part, snap the uh, shoulder in place. Okay, push this rubber in over here. Just make sure you have enough gap. And once the rubber is in, just close it tight. Okay, so the rubber gets uh, gets in nicely. Over here. And then over here on top, I'm going to uh, slot in the uh, sword piece. So over here, slot it in over here. Okay, and that is uh, done for this part. Okay, and just get the balance nicely. Get the balance of the robot first. Because so I shifted the, um, the uh, what you call it, the feet. So that's why the balance is a little bit off now. Let me just try to get it back first before I carry on the review. Okay, am I getting back the balance? Okay, slot over the front. Okay, good. More or less got the balance right. Okay, so after I'm done this, you take this out. Okay, you slot this to the back of the arm. 
okay there's a join to actually snap it in and over here you snap it in as well okay okay let me just try to snap it in nicely let's have missed the certain part over here okay good snap it nicely in place okay now at the back okay I'm gonna fit in the GN drive so make sure the GN drive you fit it in um, make sure the grooves are this so there's two two cut two grooves over here so basically you make sure these two parts goes into this blue parts over here so slot it in nicely close it close it close it and you have the GN drive done okay so next part is that the <coughs> excuse me okay you need to fit in the uh, back portion so the back portion right the instructions basically tell you to fit it in but I think by doing so it's a little bit more difficult so I chose to take this out alright fit this in nicely make sure that this piece aligns this way make sure you close it this way this is wrong make sure that this part is as close as aligned to this part as possible okay push it in okay nicely then you fit this part in nicely make sure you fit this part in nicely okay there's a uh, it won't really snap really really extremely tightly for this so during the the motion of the toy when you move this this will swing here and there and this might even pop out okay see like this it pops out uh, but this is just the way that the uh, toy is meant to be so uh, no ways on that so as much as possible just try to uh, slot in tightly okay once it gets aligned okay you snap this back into place at the back Okay, make sure I get it snapped nicely to the back. No, I didn't get it snapped nicely. I need to take it out again. Okay, I need to pull the arms out a little bit. Okay, let me just get the alignment nicely done first. Okay, alignment done. Push this to the back, done. So once it's done, you put this, okay, into this tab over here. This goes into here this goes into here one side each okay these rubber pieces go into here and here okay just gonna slot it in nicely okay so you push it in all the way okay once you're done okay the backpack okay the backpack I'm gonna put in the other uh, slot in okay so it's in so this part of the backpack okay there are you see these two packs over here and the two holes over here just push them and align them in nicely okay and you are done alright so basically this is Axia uh, Avalanche Axia he is done okay let me just align him nicely okay so this is a uh, yes Avalanche Axia okay so before you put all, all the uh, extra swords and blades this is how he's gonna look like really awesome really cool nice pose really breathtaking robot really 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 nice no so it looks really an armor up axial cool so to add on the uh, parts that he has okay so this one okay this part is we're gonna put at the back so this part make sure you put it in uh, the correct way so the correct way is having this part the one facing out being able to move so this part goes in over here all right and then over here you have the uh, sword so the long sword is facing outwards so you push it in okay let me get the correct catch okay snap it in place nicely and the uh, short sword goes inner side okay snap it in nicely and then you can adjust okay let me just is snap nicely in in place okay and then you can adjust the swords this way and then for the other side okay so if you have the weapons pack version okay weapon plus pack basically you have a mirror image of this part okay it goes into here and then you have the other two swords all right so over here make sure this part goes over here okay fit it in nicely Gonna adjust the backpack a little bit Okay, and we are done. So this is uh, Axia. 
Avalanche Axia, Gundam Avalanche Axia, fully assembled. Okay, let me just align this nicely over here. Okay, I think I may have aligned something wrong. Let me just see. Um, this goes over here nicely. Uh, okay, maybe a little bit outwards. Yeah. Okay, let me adjust this a little bit. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to posing, so just give me a uh, a minute to just get this right. Okay. Okay, cool. So this is uh, Excel Avalanche, fully assembled. Really, really cool. Okay, so before I carry on to the uh, features of this uh, Axia, I'm going to stop the video for a while because time is running out and I'll continue in a short while. Alright, so here's me resuming the uh, rest of the video that I have. Uh, I forgot to mention one part about this earlier on. Is that this part, okay, basically, if you are not forming the um, the back portion, okay, we're not forming the uh, hand part. So basically, let's say, for example, if the hand, you actually uh, took out this back. So there's actually, there's actually a hollow over here. So what you do is actually you put this piece in place at the back. Okay, as a cover. So this piece actually acts as a cover over here and you are not putting that part. Uh, but uh, I don't think anybody will be using it because I guess... Okay, basically there are two of these, so on two sides you can put this. Because I think everyone who has a has an, uh, extra avalanche should probably pose him this way. I don't see a reason why you were posing without this, but uh, it is you not know, a good uh, a good uh, gesture by Bandai to actually give us that extra part in case some of us want to pose him that way. So here's some other features that we have over here is that um, there's this function okay, over here that you can actually take out this part over here, this tab over here. And this tab, okay, interestingly, actually fits into this hole over here. So I'm just going to fit in this hole over here just to show what this tab does. So fill in this hole over here, okay, uh, okay, just kind of trying to get the uh, hole in place, align it nicely, okay, this can be a, a little bit of a pain to do, uh, I managed to do it pretty easily earlier on, let me see if I can adjust it on my own over here. Okay, I got it in place. Okay, I'm gonna line the arms nicely, and this way, yeah. So basically, if you see um, over here, <coughs> I actually put in the uh, pack into the arm over here. Uh, for what purpose is this? I have no idea because the instructions do say that I can put this in, but it doesn't give me uh, any reason why I put this in. It's sort of it makes me feel like this, like you know, he's entering the atmosphere from space and then he's closing everything and then just going down this way. Uh, apart from that, I do not know why you put this in this way, but maybe you know you can actually have the the arm portion as part of the uh, booster pack, maybe you know, you know, it moves this way nicely, you know, maybe as part of the booster pack, which is why maybe they give you this piece, you know, in case you want this piece over up over here, you have a cover over here. So maybe, maybe that's why, you know, so maybe, you know, it looks different this way, you see. So if I X here, with the uh, booster pack over here, you know, but I think it looks weird, you know. I, I personally prefer this this pack, this part to be on the arm. It looks much nicer, so I don't know, maybe those of you who, who know the side story or who have the uh, novel or whatever, who have actually read this, actually know the purpose of doing that and you can enlighten me in the comments, I would really appreciate it. So over here, you can actually open over here. So you can actually move this to the front if you want to, move them to the back. So they are really free motion to this, which is really cool, really, really cool. And this swords, you can move front and back, apparently to make it easier for Axia to uh, reach for them. The swords at the backpack can actually move all the way front. <coughs> over here. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, what are the features? Let me go through first. Okay, and for the uh, booster pack at the back, you can shift them out this way. So it's really cool. It's like a full boost, <laughs> fly out. You know, this is like before you launch, but after you launch, it's like whoa, really nice, really really nice touch. Okay, and uh, other nice touches you have is that okay for the front part. Okay, let me just take out one beam saber. Okay. 
I'm gonna take out one beam saber. So basically, you have uh, two small ones, okay, and uh, two large ones, okay. So you can actually have a dagger or you can have a sword, up to you. And um, very interesting feature is that over here, it has an extra hand over here. So when you pull this out, okay, you can actually do for the other side as well. And you pull this up, okay. There's actually a claw, okay, that can open and actually hold the beam saber, okay. So it's like Axia has so many swords like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven swords, okay. So seven swords. Two on his hand, two over here, four, and then maybe the other two, the uh, claws at the back will handle. So yeah, it's really cool. Uh, you can use this to hold the uh, other swords at the back as well if you want to. Uh, but um, this is just an illustration, you know, example to show you what you can do over here. It's a nice extra touch, extra feature. Really, really cool. Sweaty pumps, sorry. So I'm gonna put this um, back over here. Okay. A uh, very nice uh, feature of the uh, backpack, okay, is that it can actually shift out. So I'm gonna shift out for for this side. Okay, both sides are actually the same, but I'm just gonna shift out this side just for just to show you guys what you can do. So to show you more effectively, I'm going to just take out this part first. So what you do actually for a backpack is that you shift this out, okay, pull this out, this die cast part, all right? So this part, okay, actually can swing out, okay. But this part actually rotates, so this part actually rotates. And what you want to do to make sure it rotates nicely, do not hold it this part because I'm not sure if it will break anything. Hold it as close as possible over here. Rotate it, okay. It gets a little tough, so maybe I'll rotate the other direction, okay. Rotate the other direction, and you swing it out over here. So basically what it does, right, if you have the uh, swords uh, over here, being held over here, Let's put this back in. Okay, let me just slot it back in properly first. Okay, so basically what this does is that it slots you. Oops, <coughs> drops. So sorry about it. Let me just slot it in nicely again. I didn't clip it in nicely just now. Okay, so now there's a clip. So basically what it does is uh, swap this, uh, the sword out over here. And then you do know the shoulder motion allows you to do this. Okay, move this much out. Okay, so basically this is for you to actually simulate the pose of Axia. Okay, getting his sword out this way. Which is very, very, very nice. So this is the function of the backpack. is to actually swing out for Axia to actually get his uh, sword. This is a very, very cool feature. Very cool. So over here, uh, start it back. Okay, you need to adjust this, rotate this back, and the backpack goes back nicely. Okay, cool. So similarly, you can do it for the uh, other side for the uh, sword part. Okay, this giant sword part, but I'm just uh, not going to show you because basically it's the same thing. <coughs> so it's very cool. Axia. Avalanche Axia. Basically, very, very nice looking Gundam. Uh, very nice uh, and awesome features. You know, it really has these nice add on parts, you know, add armor up. And the best thing is that he's not an exact, uh, the body is not an exact replica of uh, Axia itself. I've done a comparison uh, looking at the, uh, the uh, parts. So the arm basically is the same as for this part. Okay, it's different. Uh, Legs are exactly the same except for the sides and the back. And for the chest compartment, it's very different. Let me just show you Axial right now since I'm at it. So for the chest compartment, this is actually one flat part, but this is actually two, two parts. So actually it's very, very different. And the blue for Axial and the blue for uh, Avalanche, Axial Avalanche is actually a different shade of blue as well. Same with the uh, shade of uh, yellow, okay. This is a uh, more um, golden yellow, whereas there is a uh, Excel for Excel is more of a pale yellow, so this is more of an orangey uh, color. And for the uh, red as well, I realized that the uh, red for the uh, Excel Avalanche is actually uh, has a slightly purple tinge to it compared to the red of uh, the uh, normal Excel. So it has a purple tinge to it. Sword wise is a um, exactly the same okay 
so no difference to that okay and uh, this is cool so here is Excel with uh, Excel Gundam Excel with Gundam Avalanche Excel and this is a uh, double O riser all three of them together you can see how awesome they look together <coughs> excuse me so Gundam Ex Ex Avalanche Excel with these two looks really really awesome they look very nice together and it does look really massive so it's an upgrade of this uh, not in the TV series but in the side story but a very very nice upgrade I really love him because uh, Metal Build as we all know is a very quality uh, robot uh, and then um, it's really solid joints are tight uh, quality is good you know I have no QC issues with him he's really awesome I, I love him a lot which is why I got the weapon spec version as well so uh, this is really cool and then um, what should I say this is a Tamashi uh, exclusive okay which means they are probably gonna do only one run of this you won't get a rerun so get him while you still can because prices of metal bit are known to go up unless they reissue and for Tamashi products they hardly reissue okay they hardly reissue Double O Riser was a reissue of 7 swords without the 7 sword and a reissue of the uh, double o, uh, the o riser okay apart from that there's no reissue and the price of this piece is going up very high as well so i advise all you those of you who actually like this piece get it now you know get it fast before prices go up uh, too high uh, this is really an awesome piece and it's really really worth every single penny that you have so uh, here's Charles signing off with yet another toy review i hope you guys have enjoyed it do stay tuned to my channel for more reviews next time